Oh yeah, this is uh, Robert Bolaños and uh, doing a video on some useful formulas. Uh, as a power engineer, uh, practicing engineer for 20 years, uh, you use a lot of equations and, uh, and these are perhaps not uh, uh, as important but they actually are useful especially if you're a power engineer. Uh, as a power engineer we're usually driving MOSFETs and the main consideration when we're driving MOSFET is the capacitance between the gate and the source and when we're driving them we want to be sure that we drive them fast uh, with a fast uh, rise time and discharge them with a fast uh, fall time and uh, for that we have to size the driver correctly in other words your driver has to have enough uh, in this case it would have to have enough sourcing current source and if you're going to discharge then it would be a sink okay so these two equations help you in sizing them or at least it gives you a intuitive feel of uh, the dynamic output impedance. And then the third equation, oh basically, hang on, let me backtrack. And basically these two are the same. There's just the the reciprocal, or not the reciprocal, but kind of the uh, uh, one defines the rise time and the other one uh, the fall time. And then the third is this bandwidth uh, equation, okay? So those are three very useful and I'm going to show some examples spice examples how to use them and so forth okay so before I proceed to that let me go ahead and give a formal definition of the rice time formula okay and uh, I'm gonna put uh, give you some application where you can use this uh, uh, RT let me see right there it is your the rice time formula and one of the applications would be how to estimate the dynamic output impedance of a driver. Now when I say a driver it can be a digital chip, it could be the like for example the CD series of digital gates, digital chips, but it could also be a FET driver. Okay. Okay. So very useful for that. And really the definition of the rise time is actually uh, if you look at this little pictorial or schematic let's say your chip or driver switches from 0 to 10 volts okay and that can be modeled by this 10 volts with a switch and keep in mind that your driver is always going to have a R out okay R O and when they specify your drivers, they always specify some kind of a C load. Okay. So the rise time is really the time it takes. At, this would be t equals zero, basically when the switch is turned on. Okay. And then the time that it takes to rise to ten percent. Let's see. Ten percent of your voltage. Okay. So in this case, since I'm putting ten volts, ten percent of ten volts would be that spot would be one volt. Okay. And then as it rises it charges a capacitor once it gets to 90 percent of your voltage again being 10 volts then this point is going to be 9 volts okay so the time is the time from the 10 percent to the 90 percent Okay, so this time, 
that it takes to go from 1 volt, 10%, to 9 volt, 90%, is your rise time. I'll just put RT for now. Okay. And vice versa, when you discharge, you're going to have the same ba basic definition. It's when you discharge and you're at your 90% and then it discharges to 10%, then it's the time that it discharges from 90 to 10%. This time from here to there, from 90 to 10, that is called the fall time. Okay. Now, here's a uh, an example of a driver that we uh, that power engineers use quite a bit. This is the MIC 4422. Okay, this is done non inverting, and if you notice, typic this is very typical on most drivers, even digital chips. You have a P channel, and you have an N channel. So basically, this is connected to your VDD or source, and this will be your ground. Okay, and when the P channel turns on, it charges your cap. In this case, let's call it a C load. Okay, and let's say if this is connected to 10 volts, the the P MOS will charge this to 10 volts. Then, when this turns off, this turns on, meaning the end channel. When the end channel turns on, then this is a sink. So, the 10 volts that are charged and stored in the capacitor then are discharged via the transistor. So, remember the end channel is a sink and the P channel is a source. So like I said, the MIG 4422 is a commonly used driver in switching power supplies. And there's uh, times that you may need to know what the dynamic output impedance, okay? And uh, you can look at the data sheet and you, look, you can look out for RO out. But sometimes it's not published. Sometimes. Actually, most of the time it's not published. Okay. So, how would you estimate that? Or how would you figure? Or how would you uh, try to estimate what the output? Well, like I said, most drivers will not have that so what you do is you look for switching times and under that category if you notice here it says TR time rise and fall time fall time and they give you in this case this will be the typical and this is the max. Okay. So for my uh, examples I'll be using 23 nanoseconds. Okay. So 23 nanoseconds is the rise time. Okay. So there's one other piece of information that you need. You need to know what is the load. In this case, the load is 10,000 picofarads, which is really 10 nanofarads. Okay. So, with that information, we can extract fairly easy you know, the the RO. Okay. And 
let's go ahead and do that some simulations just to get a feel for okay okay now let me go ahead and what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna do a simulation of a simple uh, capacitor so let me go ahead and I'm gonna comment this out for the time being okay and let me just change this to five just just to show okay and I'm, I actually have three models here let me combat that I'll leave this one on and I'm gonna delete that okay and I'm going to do a transit okay so basically this is the first schematic that I had uh, and I'm gonna put a pulse this case not sure if you can see it the initial value is zero and then I'm going to pulse it 10 volts and in this case let me go ahead and put this to zero delay now I define in here rise time of one nanosecond fall time of one nanoseconds you want this to be faster than the 20 nanoseconds because then if you were to make this 100 nanoseconds then this would introduce errors so you want to set this as fast as possible and I'm using a pulse width of one microsecond in a period of two mi uh, nanoseconds okay so I'm gonna run a transient and I go to setup time steps two nanoseconds uh, stop time 10 microseconds and a ceiling at 2 nano and I see what we get okay so this is the waveform and we'll go ahead and expand that so then go ahead and use the cursors and we can set this at 1 since 1 is 10% of 10 so we can come here where it says Y and I tell it go to 1 volt it goes to 1 volt I go to the next cursor and then I go to the position fix Y and now I want 9, nine, nanose nine volts so now this is at 1 this is a 9 so it'll go cursor and delta x2 x1 will give you my time rise so in this case I have a time rise of 110 nanoseconds so time rise time of 110 nanoseconds okay so let's see if the equation holds up okay let me find my calculator okay so to find R out the impedance of the circuit output impedance we know that it's going to be if you solve for let me go back here and let me go up here so if, keep in mind okay time rise is equal to 2.2 R out and in this case uh, CL so if you solve for RO it's time rise 2.2 times CL so in this case it was 110 nanoseconds divided by 2.2 and 10 nano 
ferrets. Okay. So it's a hundred and ten nano divided by two point two times ten uh, nano gives you five ohms. Okay, and it's actually the value of the resistor that I use. Okay, so using that, okay, we can do this. Okay, we can try and verify our if you have a uh, a make model, and in this case, in the library I do, I can type make. It says make 4422. Okay. And I have the model here. It's make 22. And let's kind of verify how close to the specifications or the data sheet is the model. Okay. So that would be a good way to find. Okay. So we had to add a source. Here's the source. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the, uh, add a signal source. So now I'm going to go ahead and plot this, this voltage. So I'm going to uncomment this. And I'm going to comment this one out for the time being. OK. So now should be able to hit run and the simulation may take a little longer typically models that uh, simulations that contain model run slower much slower okay so let's go ahead here's the result let me take delete V3 for now. Okay, so now I can zoom on the rising time and we'll do the same thing. Here was the cursor, position, fine. Here's that. Next cursor, position, and go to 9 volts. Okay, and then we do the x2 minus x1, in this case, 23, which is pretty good. This says 22.9, okay, TR equals 22.9 nanoseconds. Okay, so that's very good. This model actually matches very close to the publish uh, rise time okay so that's that's something very useful uh, to have okay so We verified the model. Okay. And we found out that the TR is very close to the 23, 22, with a load of 10 nanoseconds. Okay. So, with that in mind, we can go ahead and see what the dynamic impedance is, just like we did with the capacitor circuit okay so we'll go ahead and uh, let's see. let me go ahead and we said it was 22 okay run that off to 23 okay which is what I have here okay so let's see what the dynamic output impedance would be and it would be 23 nano 
divided by 2.2 times 10 nanoseconds. And it says it's 1.04. 1 1.04 ohms. So this would be the R out of the MIG 4422. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's look at the PDF again. Okay, now I did this in purpose because in this case, if you notice, the R output is actually published. Now, mind you, most devices don't publish the R, R out, but in the case, in this case, it does on the 4422. So here it says output high, so that would be when it's sourcing and output low would be when it's sinking and if you look in here it says that uh, the typical would be 0 0.08 up to a maximum of 3.6 so again the 0 0.8 is very close to the 1 so indeed the math and the modeling seems to coincide and seems to fit very well okay now if you take a look at the spice model. Let's look at the output. And I believe there may be the nut list. Hang on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop. Say no. No. Okay. I want to take a th take a look at the output model. Now, this is what I want to show. This is the sub circuit. Okay. This is the sub circuit of the MIG forty four twenty two, and it starts from here and ends to here. So, it's it's a uh, not a huge model but it's complicated enough okay but let's say you don't have access to a particular model for driver fed driver or what whatever the case may be okay and uh, so how do you what can you do so basically what if you don't have a model of the MIG 4422. Can you extract or can you use something else different? And the answer is yes you can. Again you can use the equation the RT and TF basically you want to extract R out which is what we extracted right here this is our our out okay so we know it's basically one ohm okay and then we want to use what is called the digital spice model if you're not familiar uh, with uh, with the digital spice model there's a book by dr. Jake Baker Uh, I believe it's called CMOS Layout Simulation Design. It's a very good book. And in his book, he explains the digital model. But I'll explain it. The digital model allows you to make certain assumptions, and you can use the results from those assumptions you can use a P device and an N device and model basically the output driver 
of the circuit. In other words, you can size these to give you the same rise time or drive or current and sinking capability. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, to sh to explain, it's better to show. Okay, and the first thing that you need to do is in Spice by default. Default. It has a certain R process. Okay, and this process is really dependent. And when I say R process, it means that the units are in ohms, okay? And this process is really dependent on the voltage that you're using, okay? So if your gate driver is a 5 volts, then you put 5 volts here. If it's 10 volts, 10 volts here. So in my design example, this is 10 volts, okay? And then you also add that right here. Okay. Now, by default, this is supposed to be KP. So, if you do not define KP in SPICE, this is the default. It's 20 microamps per volt square. And, of course, there's a divide underneath. So, basically, if you use this equation, you plug in the numbers, and as long as your voltage is 10 volts, you end up with a process resistance or the R, R process equivalent to 10 K ohms. Okay. Once you have this, you're basically almost there. Okay. You use this equation. Okay. This equation will tell you what is the the width of the MOSFET that you will use based on R out. Okay. So remember R out of the make forty four twenty two is one ohm. Okay, one ohm. Okay. Okay. And the process is 10K. And the length, the length is the length of the MOSFET. So by default, we're going to leave it or say that it's one micrometer. Okay. So with that, let's go ahead and calculate what the length would have to be okay so we want approximately 1 ohm okay times 1 micrometer divided by 10,000 Hang on. Okay. Actually, I wrote the equation backwards. Excuse me. Let's try it again. Let's flip this. I believe I wrote it. Let's see. K ohms, and one ohm. Okay, so use the calculator. So basically, this is going to be that goes there, and then this is RO. Okay, let's give it another try. 
10,000 times one micrometer. Okay. And that should be 10, I believe. Okay, so you end up with a width of 10, uh, 10 micrometers. Let me go ahead and uh, 10, not mil, uh, micro, uh, millimeters. Okay, so that would be it. So basically, you calculated what the resistance would be from there, from drain to source. But you also have to keep in mind that there's some resistance here from the top. So this is really 1 ohm. This is 1 ohm. Okay, but together is going to be 0 0.5. Okay, so this would be a little bit too much, in other words. We really want 1 ohm. So to get 1 ohm, that means that these have to be doubled. Okay, these have to be 2 ohms because they're in parallel. Okay. And since the resistance, remember, keep in mind this is RO that we calculated for the NMOS and PMOS. And because it's RO is really the combination of both, to get an RO of 1, we have to double it. And if we double that, that means that this has to go half. So we drop it down to 5 milli okay it'll make sense once you see the simulation okay so let's go ahead over here okay here I have the circuit okay and you can define or you can set the width to 5 milli and here I have 11 or L as 1 micro Basically, I do the same thing with the, uh, with the end channel. I connect the input, 10 nanoseconds. Okay, and let me go ahead and turn this off, so we can concentrate just on the MOSFET. And I'll put a star here. To comment it. off okay so I'll go ahead and run this okay okay here's the rise time again we do the same okay we'll go here position one volt go to the second position nine volt and then take the delta and we're pretty close 28 TR TR equals 28 nanoseconds basically okay and let's see if we add this remember this we'll set it to 1 because this is what we designed this to mimic okay and let's see if they're fairly close so I'll go ahead and uncomment this 
run it and you can see they're almost on top of each other it's a fairly close approximation okay very very close so that's a very useful model in case you wanna see whether your the output of your CMOS driver is it good enough you can always model it this way from the data sheet and you can see then do you have a good driver or not okay 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 so then the last equation that I want to bring up is uh, this one which is the bandwidth is equal to 0 0.35 equals either the time rise TR or via the time time fall okay so let's do an example okay we'll use what we already calculated we have the MOSFET model and let's see we calculated that it was 28 I believe okay so let's estimate what the bandwidth of that would be 28 nanoseconds okay so it would be 0 0.35 divided by 28 nanoseconds so this gives you approximately 12 5.5 megahertz okay now keep in mind that it's a uh, an approximation okay so this is telling me that this has a bandwidth approximately 28 okay so let's go ahead and we'll define enable this this will be an AC model I'm gonna label this at 5 and I need these two to be in the triode no saturation region and in order for it to be in the saturation region that means that the input has to be 5 volts so I'll go ahead and define it as the transient as done and leave this as 5 volts so here this is biased at 5 volts with an AC of 1 so I want to do a, a uh, Bode plot so here is my function dot hashtag autoplot AC1 VDB BOSFET okay so I'll go ahead and go to setup go to AC and I'm going to run a simulation from 1 to 100 megahertz and let's go ahead and put a little bit more points say a hundred points per decade and I believe we're ready to run and here is the Bode plot okay let me rerun it so you can see the pole the dominant pole we run it at a much lower frequency see if you can see the pole okay here's the dominant pole okay it's at about 100 257 millihertz okay but that's not the bandwidth the bandwidth is where you have unity gain okay what does unity gain mean that means we when your gain is 1 and a gain of 1 in DB is 0 so in this case we come over here this is where your 0 DB 
okay and if you look in here the frequency says 15.8 so let me go ahead so this is the frequency unity is equal to 15.8 megahertz okay 15.8 megahertz okay let me go ahead and the spice says 15.8 megahertz so they're fairly fairly close using a very simple equation so in a nutshell here's I've given you these equations basically this equation these two and then the bandwidth and I've given you examples how to use them which will give you a intuitive feel of how the output works in other words the dynamic impedance and also gives you a, a feel of how fast because of the time rise and if you take the reciprocal of that in a way the, the bandwidth as well anyway I hope this uh, you found this video uh, informative and if you have any suggestions for any future videos please uh, email me at uh, my email account it should be listed down below on my channel and uh, comments and questions are always welcome thank you very much for watching